Okay, so what else we've got? So we've got this sync button here. The idea of this is it resets the square wave um, when it's engaged. And it's, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's it's like the hard hard wave button in Music Mon. Gwen wrote about it in a live, uh, really good article about this technique. So I've implemented it and I'm not entirely happy with the implementation because there's some kind of, um, there's something getting in the way of a really clean hard sync. I don't know what it is, it's an interrupt of some sort. Anyway, that button's there, it's, it's almost doing what it's meant to, but I'm not that happy with it. So I, I won't really, there's nothing much to say about that at the moment. Uh, pad, this is an interesting one. I read a um, post on Atari forum from Ben from OVR from Overlanders and basically said that there was a, a known behavior of the YM where if you're doing a buzzer, if you set the period of the square wave to zero or one, I think they ascertain, it has the, the, the effect of halving the, or thereabouts the volume of the buzzer. Often when you're doing buzzers or sync buzzers, the problem is it's really fucking loud versus everything else. So this pad on a real ST has the effect of turning down the buzzer doesn't work in an emulator it certainly doesn't work in hatari here so if you if you play it i'll just create a buzzer actually no yeah to be clear for this to work you, you wouldn't mute the, the square like i've done here so Normally you'd mute the square, but actually in this instance, you want the square on because it's the square itself that knocks out the amplitude of the at really high frequency that makes the buzzer quieter. But like I say, it doesn't quite work on an emulator. You can hear it's interacting with it slightly, but it's not. It's not as per like a real machine. So I think that's a useful for a real machine, that pad button there. So that's pad. Okay, this is quite nice. So how can I demonstrate this? This is a sort of fake sidechain compression. Uh, and the idea here is that let's say you've got a kick drum. You can make every time that kick drum hits, you can make it duck the volume of another instrument, albeit just ever so slightly you can make it as extreme or as light as you like and the idea is you can essentially you key one instrument onto another and you can make well the best thing i can do is show you right so if i just have a let's just make a really basic kick drum so so very, very quick kick drum. Fixed frequency on the square. A bit more, slow it down. And then a bit of freak mod. And then we've got one of these um, waveforms and the freak mod is basically um, perfect for doing drum, drum sounds. That one will do. Okay. Okay, that'll do. So there's a really basic kick drum. Let's just put a bit of noise on there as well. So everything that I've, I've shown you so far. Um, okay, there you go. All right, so there's a kick drum. And then let's say on instrument two, we've got just a, let's just do a SID. Cool. So the idea is that oh, I don't want to exit track. No. So let me just um, okay. I'll, I'll talk you through the block stuff later, but just for the sake of it now. Okay. What I'm going to do is So if I just drop some kick drums, control four. Control 
control 2. That's <laughs> terrible. Anyway, the, the important thing here is basically what we're going to do is we're going to key the kick drum against the, uh, the SID. So basically the way it works is... So this is the kick drum, just so I know where I'm at. This is the SID. Okay, so basically on the kick drum, we're going to send the kick drum to the side chain. Like so. Gonna add some, so essentially what we do is we're dialing in the kick drum to the side chain, which in itself doesn't do anything because the next thing I've got to do is go to the SID that I want to key the kick drum against and I want to engage the actual key. Now let's click this button here. Now, now every time the kick drum lands, it's going to duck ever so slightly the volume of the SID. And if you can't hear that, then what we'll do is we'll up the amount that we send to the side chain. And just to prove that it's actually working, if I just mute this, it will still actually send the key to the side chain. So you should still hear the ducking. If you only just do a, a tiny little bit, like two or three, then it just makes the kick drum kick cut through a lot easier without everything sort of trying to contest for space. So that's quite handy. So that's the side chain. This is something else I want to talk about. It's something really quite fun. That's basically um, link to. So the whole idea of Link2 is that you can combine two instruments together so that when one's finished, when it's played to the end of its waveform sequence, it jumps to the next instrument that you've defined in, in Link2. So there's a few use cases for this. If you've got one channel and you want to do kick drum and bass on that same channel, and what you can do is you can link the kick to the bass so that as soon as the kick's finished, it starts playing the bass line. So we just drop an octave here. And we link this instrument kick drum to instrument number two, which is the, the SID, but we'll play it as a bass. Basically what I'm saying here is every time I press the kick drum, it's going to go through this waveform sequence here. When it ends here, it's going to jump and play instrument two, which is the, um, the bass line. And what's cool is because we use this fixed frequency here and whatever key I play on the keyboard, it will just play that kick drum at the same pitch. But when it jumps onto the second instrument, the, the um, bass line, it will play the pitch note. So I can play essentially pitch bass lines using my linked kick drum. Let me show you what that is. So if I play, play it now. Now, what you're hearing there is quite a long pause before it jumps onto the, the bass line. So what you would probably do in this instance, if you want to get that snappy interplay between kick drum and bass is you just reduce the kick drum to it's just the first couple of steps. So if I play it now, in fact, what we do, let's turn, let's turn the side chain off as well, because we don't actually need the side chain in this instance because they're both occupying the same channel. So Link2 is really, really cool in that respect. Super handy for combining kicks and bass lines. One other really cool uh, feature of Link2 is you can link to this yourself, All right? So if I link instrument one to instrument one, what it's basically going to do is when it gets to the end of this waveform, it's going to start playing it again. Now, you might not quite see what the useful applications of that are, but actually you can do some freaky stuff with that. 
as I'll demonstrate. So if I play that now, theoretically, it will just start playing that triggered kick drum. Okay, which is one thing. But what you can actually do, and where things get start getting interesting, is if I change the speed or the even uh, the, the the length of this waveform, where well, you'll see what happens. Now, changing the, the, the length of the waveform isn't a whole lot of use because you can't really do that in, um, in a live environment. What you can do is change the speed. That's really, really cool. And the cool thing is as well that you can basically use a tracker code and you can automate that in your in your track. So you can do some mad dub snares and you can use this on digi drums, um, all sorts of gear. That one is one of the, the nicest, nicer kind of little gimmicks in the bag. So I hope you enjoy that one. So that's linked to.